Hey, and welcome. Today, we'll be going over something that I personally am a huge fan of. Um, it is this thing here. An AR-15 chambered in 762 by 39 um, Playfully known as the AR-47. Um, I have four real talking points, and I'll try to be quick about them so we can not make this too long because I'm I like to do that um, <clears throat> first one being uh, a simple question that's one real simple question that's asked the second one being why you would build a an AR-15 chambered in 762 by 39 how you make it reliable and then fourth really is just footage verifying that it is capable of being accurate so first the question that is commonly asked is 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 do you require a different lower receiver to build a 762 by 39 AR-15? The answer is no. You use a standard mil spec lower receiver. If this will focus, you can see that A indicating that mine is an aero precision lower receiver. Um, I've got the magpul grip and stock. There's the answer to that question. The lower receiver mil spec lower receiver any kind will do there's nothing special about any single one of them i promise second point why why would you build something like this for many people in the south and texas in general there is a pretty simple answer to that wild hogs now let me explain if you're hunting on public land it is a requirement by state law that you do not fire at, and this is my understanding, you could correct me if I'm incorrect, but my understanding is that when hunting feral hogs on national or uh, state land, such as a state park or national park or whatever it may be, you are not legally able to fire anything less than a 30 caliber at a wild hog. This meets that because a 762 by 39, if you aren't aware, is a 30 cal. Who knew, right? So, that's really why. Also, before Biden's whole thing, this was a cost-efficient way to train. 762 by 39 historically has been cheaper than 223-556. It's also harder hitting. It's not as fast. But, you can hunt hogs with this because the AR-15 is the, honestly, probably in my opinion, the best pig rifle that exists. You can argue with me if you want, but you're not going to convince me otherwise. And to include a round that no, that you can follow state law and keep within the, the, the confines of the law to hunt, this is the way to do it. 30 round magazine, herd of pigs, 762 by 39, you're all within your legal right to protect a piece of property. Now how? How do you make this reliable? I will tell you. There are three parts, and I will show you those closer up. It is going to be the first and most important in my opinion, and it's kind of tied with the second one. So an enhanced firing pin, very important. Two, enhanced hammer spring. Wolf provides a company, not, not I don't believe it's the same as the ammunition, but a company called Wolf makes a spring that is an enhanced spring, so it's tighter coiled, and gives you more force when pulling the trigger on the hammer. I'll show you that in close detail very soon. Third, and third is really for comfort, is going to be your buffer weight. You're going to want to increase the weight of the buffer so you can reduce the recoil, so you can mitigate it and stay on target when firing rapidly or at multiple targets. There's how. So, uh, so really, that's, why, that's it. Why, how, and then, I'll show you these parts up close that I'm telling you about so you know what to change. And then later on in another future video, I'll show you how to change some of those things because I think it could be useful in case you're confused or don't know where to approach, how to approach such an, a task, you know. But now I'll show you those parts and then we'll move into accuracy and show verify that even a small frame woman that's very light can fire a rifle like this chambered in 762 by 39 accurately and well. Okay, so 
here's your firing pin and this is the enhanced version of that for the 762 by 39 this nipple here on the end I do not any longer have a um, a normal firing pin for an AR-15 to compare this to but if I did you would see that this is a bit longer so it can properly um, function with the primer of a 762 by 39 and even more so to uh, efficiently set off the primer for a steel cased ammunition now the other and these are the two most important items that you will need to look into and again I will put these in the description hopefully a link um, that will stay uh, because YouTube doesn't really like that I share information evidently or that others share information so certain comments might not even be visible if you try to make a recommendation now this is the other part that is remarkably important and I'm trying to figure out a way I'll cut that out but uh, in here as you can see this is your hammer this spring is the important thing the second most important thing to help your AR-15 uh, function with steel cased ammunition now the way that you change that and I'll make I'll be making a separate video on how to do that essentially you push this pin out right here that one the one that's obviously been fucked with um, you push that out your hammer will come out you can remove the spring and you put on a wolf spring I believe is the name of the manufacturer um, and it has worked wonders for not only this particular rifle but uh, my pistol as well and I have had a lot uh, well no failures since uh, it's, it's worked out really well so I highly recommend those two parts to make it function well. The third thing that may just benefit you is to change the buffer, and I will show you how to do that in a later date because I'm going to do that for this rifle. Haven't done it yet, so I'm going to do an H3 buffer weight. Uh, it, essentially what that will do is increase the weight of this buffer by a couple ounces and uh, prevent so much recoil from coming back and hitting you on the stock. So there's that. Now that those things have been kind of covered, I will uh, move on to whether or not they are accurate and if they are reliable. Um, these items will assist you in making them more reliable, uh, namely the firing pin, hammer spring, are almost a must if you're like me and you like to shoot steel case ammo. I do a lot of that um, and I haven't had any issues since changing those. That being said, let's move on and we'll take a look at some shooting. Um, primarily this is not going to be me shooting because this rifle was built for a beautiful lady that I love and so it's sighted in for left-handed shooting so she will be taking over for the shooting portion of this um, but maybe you'll see me shoot a few shots left-handed and it, it, it's kind of beneficial the best thing about this to me is that I was able to build a rifle for somebody else and it works for them for a purpose um, that is very satisfying to me to know that it's not just f something designed around my fitting, my dominance of whatever I. So she's left eye, uh, left eye dominant and left handed. I'm right handed and right eye dominant, obviously. So this rifle was built around her needs, and uh, it's nice to see that it works. But anyway, we'll move on to that. You're up. Oh, I'm out. So there you have it. All the parts, 
that are necessary to make sure that you can fire steel cased ammunition comfortably. Proof that it can be shot accurately. And of course, uh, like I said, I'll try to include some of those parts for you to review and purchase. And this is also my Pro 2A tactical upper receiver that I mentioned before. Not really dialed in for me. I had to do some left handed shooting. You may have seen that. I'm not left handed. This was really built around someone else and I'm really honestly quite proud of myself and proud of her but I'm, more, I'm very happy that I was able to build a rifle for somebody else that worked well. That being said I hope you've enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it. I had a real good time. I really appreciate your time. As always thank you very much. God bless the great state of Texas.